Welcome to Turtle Wow News with Vrograg. I'm your news anchor orc, Vrograg Fishslayer, here to bring you all the server news for the week of December 19th, 2023. I am broadcasting today from the bustling docks of Ratchet since I decided to reveal myself and face the hundreds of snowballs coming my way, thanks to the Wintervale quest with me as one of the objectives. Apologies in advance if any onlookers or questing players run into the picture. Today is jam-packed. Tomorrow is the release date for the Labor and Legacy patch. We have word from the team about big PvP updates, the changelog from the 12th, a hot fix this last weekend, and something new is coming to market to watch as well. So let's get to it. I'm the Orc, and here's the news. Our top story today is about the patch that is just hours away from coming out. While last week we covered much of it in earnest, now is a great time to remind people that the server downtime for the patch should be longer than normal, and it is vital that players remember to clear their WDB to prevent bugs from manifesting in their client. Unlike with larger patches, there has been no word about the database being taken offline, but remember the values on the TurtleWow database can still have erroneous information until the website also gets properly updated, which does not always happen concurrently with the patch. While the patch notes does remain the main source of new things coming to the server, I have confirmed <laughs> will be getting placed somewhere in the world. Keep your eyes peeled for that and other secrets. Hopefully TurtleWow can keep their good record with largely smooth rollouts of new patches. I wish nothing but the best to everyone who will be enjoying the new High Elf and Goblin starting zones, the developing storylines therein, and eagerly await all the new cosmetics coming to our diminutive green friends as well. See you in Labor and Legacy soon. Our next top story was coming out last week right when I was editing last week's news episode. Akalux took to the forums posting a roadmap of things to come. The lion's share of the changes live right now are for the PvP content. Blood Ring had some nice quality of life changes added to allow players to buff fully, get their soul shards back, and even stop the pet trinket arena meta dead in its tracks. Battleground queues can now be paused rather than dropped entirely, and rank 6 potions can stack up to 10. Alterac Valley had its honor gain reduced by 25%, but reputation buffed by 25% while all the other battlegrounds got a flat 25% increase in honor gained. More than anything though, it is clear that the team is pushing for more world PvP. There is a flat removal of dishonorable kills now. That combined with a whopping 50% honor increase for world PvP. It is not just slugging it out in STV either, because in the future, there are plans for faction leaders to have custom loot tables. This means there is nothing stopping city raids, and, if anything, they are being actively encouraged. According to the post, the future holds even more world PvP excitement. Plans are being laid to have a number of towers in contested zones that randomly activate at scheduled intervals. These objectives will offer the winning faction honor and either War Chief's Blessing or a new world buff known as King's Battle Cry, which is assumed to be similar to the Rend buff. As if that were not enough incentive, bounties for the players with the most honorable kills and dishonorable kills will also be available for Azeroth's premier headhunters. Alterac Valley is even being altered to be less friendly to those who just want to fish and pick herbs in an open battleground, since there is a system being worked out to push peaceful players out of the battleground if they spend too long out of combat. While some of these future changes seem a bit challenging to integrate, there are also some impactful yet practical modifications coming. With the 1.17.1 patch, Nordrenar and Telebim will have a flat XP bonus, 10% and 20% respectively, as a limited time event. Those reaching level 20 during the event will also receive a gift for their achievement. In conjunction with the event, the War Mode Glyph is having its bonus XP reduced to 20%, but will now grant a 20% bonus to honor gains. Two tweaks aimed squarely at the economy of Turtle WoW involve Plague Bloom and Rich Thorium Veins. Plague Bloom can now be picked from Arthas' tiers on random chance and be found in Stratholme. 
both of these changes to the herb are in the game currently, though I was not able to confirm much about these claims as of the writing of this script. For those seeking riches in Thorium, sometime in the future, places known for only spawning regular Thorium veins will now have a chance to spawn the bigger, more sought after rich Thorium nodes. Both of these changes were to help the server deal with scarcity issues. The final note errata, and one dear to my good friend Obamsawin, is a new item planned to help the Tauren of Azeroth with their plane striding. Currently, even a Tauren trained in epic riding will still be slower plane striding than any other character on an epic mount, despite plane striding being a designed alternative to riding. The Turtle team is planning to right this injustice by adding what are being called horseshoes, despite the clear anatomical difference in hoof between a horse and a bovine humanoid. Naming issues aside, these shoes will be added to Blacksmith's recipe arsenal, which will increase plane striding speed by 3%, allowing Torn to keep up with the herd of their mounted friends. It looks like there is a lot on the docket for the team to work on. Make sure to let us know what you think about these proposed and active changes. That covers this week's top stories, so let's check to see how the auction house has been faring. Welcome to Market Watch Turtle Wow's premier auction house analysis by an orc pretending to know what numbers mean. All the numbers we use are provided and powered by WowAuctions.net. Make sure to visit our partner in data to do your own investment due diligence. Before we jump into the stocks, I wanted to announce that a friend of the stream, Sonic Death Monkey, has kindly developed a program that will make gathering and storing market data much easier. In the coming months, I hope to be able to start having new commodities and indices to share with all of you. I've gone from tracking 7 commodities and 1 index in an hours long process to tracking nearly 100 commodities and 7 indices in a minutes long process. Not only that, but it also takes the stored data and generates graphs for me. A previously tedious effort now made simple. So from the bottom of my heart Sonic, thank you so much. If there is a commodity on the auction house that you think I should be tracking, please let me know. The process is much more accessible now. Now onto the stocks. Arcane Crystal trended down in the short term, losing over 10% and closing in the mid-19s of gold. The trend of Arcane Crystal losing steam is continuing. 19 gold hasn't been seen since early July and it may continue to lower if market forces continue. Outside of big jump on the 6th towards 32 gold, Black Lotus has remained pretty flat recently with aspects of some volatility. Though the prices are certainly elevated versus earlier in the year, there hasn't been much signs of climbing over 35 gold anytime soon. Cured Rugged High trended lower in the last two weeks despite a strong showing on the 6th peaking at 28 gold. It has now settled down to near the 23 gold valuation. Since October, the hide has demonstrated some ups and downs but reliably stays above 22 gold. After rallies in weeks past, Grom's Blood seems to be finding some stability around the 1 gold, 20 silver amount, with normal peaks and valleys accounted for such high volume of buying and selling. Though these prices likely sting those in most need of the herb, there is some signs of it coming back down away from peaks earlier this month. Large Brilliant Shards displayed remarkable demand last week, actually reaching the 4 gold mark briefly, but more recently bounced between 3.1 and 3.3 gold. This could be the beginning of a real Cinderella story for the enchanting reagent that once seemed destined for irrelevance. Mooncloth also was hit by price surges on the 6th, but otherwise remained flat near 18 gold. The price is showing historically strong stability and could help tailors better budget with their reliable pricing. Stone Scale Eels has started to climb again, showing just how hard to find and valuable the slimy guys are. In two weeks, the price rose about 25% from 1 gold to 1 gold 25 silver. It seems like for a second there, eels might come back down, but demand is showing steady resilience and could even grow more in the future. On to the S&V 7, the index made up of all the stocks previously mentioned. This one month period, the index ended up about where it started helped by a big market rush on a number of SNV stocks on the 6th. Historically, when the index is this high, 
there are big market movers, but since September, this type of fluctuation is usually followed by a drop of a few points, so do be advised. That completes this week's market analysis. Market Watch hopes you found this information useful. Make sure to keep an eye on your coins, otherwise someone else will for you. Let's get back to the news. It wouldn't be a turtle wow news without looking at the change log. Today we have two entries to review, one from the 12th and a smaller hotfix from the 18th. Many items on the change log were already noted earlier in Acalyx's post, but other impactful changes came too. So let's jump in with another rapid fire change log roundup. Gaston, the goblin junk collector, is back in the game, allowing players to get back erroneously deleted items once more, with the new caveat that items he restores are now soulbound. Chests found in raids can no longer provide loot to players that were not in the instance when it spawned. Rejoice skinners, Worgen and Gilneas had their skinning loot fixed. The ability from the thorn pod trinket known as Thorn Volley has had its spell scaling quote nerfed into the ground. Improved shadow form had its mana cost reduced for accuracy. The peasants summoned via the bear of peasant collar should have their missing aggro text back. Onto the hot fix on Sunday, the void linked satchel is now a bind on pickup item. The snowball mount that drops from the world boss of the same name is now a bind on pickup item. The same boss also has had its respawn timer lowered from 16 hours to around 5 to 6 hours to help players complete the Wintervale quest to kill him. Nature's Gift from Emerald Sanctum had some sheathing and display issues corrected, and finally, the Race Against Time quest will no longer grant Cenarian Circle reputation because I don't think drag racing in the salt flats of Thousand Needles has anything to do with druids. That completes this week's changelog roundup. Of course, this week there won't be a changelog to look out for as much as there will be a new patch. Keep your eyes peeled though, you never know what might appear without proper documentation. It's no mystery that Turtle Wow's expanded Wintervale experience is happening right now. Players are seen everywhere with their festive winter hats, Cities are lit up with brightly decorated trees. There has been a sudden blight upon moonkins for their eggs needed for making eggnog, which ironically is then used to warm up other moonkins in Wintervale. World Chat is consistently asking if the snowball world boss is up. Players such as myself are actively tracked down like wild animals for the icy menace quest. The snowballs. So many snowballs. This is the first time this expanded Wintervale content has been available to such a large player base. Back in 2022, the server population had not yet really exploded and was well under 3,000. Now, with so many new players experiencing the holiday cheer, there have been some clear growing pains. Snowball's long respawn timer on Nordrenar has caused friction which fortunately has been somewhat alleviated by GMs being allowed to respawn the wintry fiend so players can get the quest done. Over on Telebim, well, it's gone exactly like you think it might go, a bloodbath. Veteran players who partook in the 2022 Wintervale noticed that quests they completed last year were not reset, and sadly, so far, word from the team is that they won't reset those quests. And of course, Norgenar players have been struggling to get all their targets done due to time restrictions and a certain elusive bear. That is a far cry better though than Telebim, where the version of the quest that they were offered was the PvE version from the previous year for players that don't exist on their server, though I have received unconfirmed word that the problem should be rectified soon. I'd like to take this time to remind everyone that last year the festival lasted for about a month. So with any luck, all players should have plenty of time to do the myriad custom content offered, even if you're planning on going on holiday. Wintervale isn't about the gifts. It's about having a chance to connect with your community. I've witnessed GMs transforming players into all manner of creatures. I've seen search parties form to track down snowball targets. I've seen Torin plane striding while in a holiday gnome outfit, giving a good laugh to all. So yes, things aren't perfect, but that's the essence of Turtle Wow. It might be a little scuffed, but the community more than makes up for it. 
Remember, it's a festival. Have fun and get in the spirit. Merry Wintervale to all. That completes all the news and one blathering editorial for the week. Thank you for joining me for the news. Last weekend, we had a great time enjoying the Wintervale festivities, and this weekend, I'm primed to have a more traditional fishing chat, since evidently you can't fish in Wintervale. Make sure to swing by on Saturday, noon, U.S. East Coast Standard Time, 5 p.m. server. I have to hang out here for a while longer so people can keep hitting me in the face with snowballs, but don't worry, at this point, I'm just getting numb to it, although that could just be the ice. I hope to see you all again soon. If you like this program, make sure to like and subscribe. I wish you all the best in your endeavors here, on the server, or elsewhere. No matter what you're doing, try to have fun, be safe, and as always, remember, the deadliest weapon is knowledge.